So in today's tutorial, we're going to make a seamless 3D infinite zoom transition in Luma Fusion. And it's going to be somewhat in the area of Ben TK and how he makes his 3D infinite zoom transitions. But he is, you know, his is the upper class because he's not using Luma Fusion. He's using After Effects and Cinema 4D. But let's see what we can do in Luma Fusion. To Luma Fusion, we need to apply a video clip which we want to use with this transition. Now, you can use any type of footage, but it really works best if you have something that you can use to mask out and then you know animate the different parts and so on. So, I have this uh, building here and it has a watch or a clock in the middle of the frame, which really helps me pull off this effect. So, the first thing I'm gonna do is to make sure that this is centered when. I zoom in. So we're gonna go into edit here and over to frame and fit and I'm just gonna zoom in and move the playhead accordingly. So once the drone has the perfect height and the clock is in the center of the screen, uh, that is when we're gonna make the cut on our timeline and turn that into a photo. So here we can see that the clock is centered. So this is a perfect fit for the transition and this is exactly where we want to have it. So it's easier for ourselves when we're gonna make the transition and the zoom effect going through this, uh, this building and through the clock here and really make that infinite 3D uh, zoom transition. So now before we move out to the timeline, make sure that you reset everything uh, within frame and fit so you have it back to normal and you can do that by tapping on this button right here. Now once we're outside on the timeline we're gonna make a cut using the scissors and we're gonna delete the last part because we don't need it. Now we're still gonna have the playhead at the exact same location and we're gonna go over to the share button and take a snapshot. And once we've taken this snapshot, we're gonna move over to Affinity Photo. Now, here's the thing, you can do this with any other free application as long as the uh, app can do transparent PNG uh, exporting. So if you have another app which can do transparent uh, exporting or PNG exporting, then you can use the erase tool to erase everything around the clock and then you can reset it and then you can erase the clock. And that means you will have the two photos needed to create this transition. So here we have the image and the first thing we're going to do is to mask out the clock which is in the center here. So we're going to go over to the masking selection button and then we're just going to do a freehand. So we draw the line around the clock and then once we're happy, we can tap on the refine button, which is down here. Now, once we tap on the refine button, you will see this. And what I do is to move one to the left. So I get to the new layer with mask and then apply that and we will have the clock only. So we're going to move over to the erase tool and we're going to draw a fine line around the clock here so it looks a little bit better. And I decided to do only the darker part here and not the outside of the clock. But eventually it's all up to you how you want to mask out. So once we've done the masking here, it looks pretty good. And we also need to do the same thing again, but this time we need to do it the other way around. So we're going to remove the clock, but we're going to maintain the build. Building. But first, uh, let's export this. So we're just going to go over to export and then just tap on share because this is already now a PNG file and we're going to save image. And once this is done, we're going to do the same thing but the opposite way. But here's a little trick to make that go faster. We're going to go over to the layers here and we're going to select the one that we just masked out. And then we're going to tap on the three dots and we're going to go over to the uh, blend mode, which is here and just tap one time on the left side, which leaves us with the erase. So that means we will erase the mask and we now have the image we want uh, instead of doing the entire masking part over again. So now we can save this as well, just to export this as the PNG settings, which you have and save the image. And we can now move back to Luma Fusion. Now, moving back to Luma Fusion, importing the clock here, you can see that this is a transparent file now, but we're not going to use the clock quite yet. This is something that we will use later in the video so we can remove that or place it somewhere else on the timeline. 
Now, if we take a look at the uh, image here of the building itself, we can see that there's a black background in the center where the clock is, and that is because this is now transparent. Now, the next step is to just shorten this down a tiny bit. The duration is all up to you how long you want the animation to be and how you want to make this, but you can also trim it down later on after creating your animation. So let's uh, move into this uh, clip here. And the first thing we're going to start with is to make some easy, easy keyframing so we have a smooth zoom going from the original position into the zoomed in position which will end up being inside the area where the clock is so the end keyframe will end up being totally black because it's going to be the transparent part of the image here so just by doing some simple easy ease keyframing here and uh, I think I made a couple of tutorials on this earlier as well. All you do is start with minimal adjustments to begin with and as you move further into the clip you start having bigger changes to the size and that's how you create the easy ease uh, keyframes or easy ease animation without having the easy ease option in Lima Fusion. And as we get closer to the end of our animation here, you can see that the image is a little bit misplaced. So for the last couple of keyframes, we need to adjust a tiny bit at a time to make sure that we center this circle in the previous screen. So it looks something like this. Now, once that is done, we're going to move out to the timeline and we're just going to play through or scrub through whatever you feel like doing. And we're going to see if there's anything that we need to adjust. And here I can see that I want this to be a little bit more zoomed in. So we're going to go into edit here and we're going to zoom in the last keyframe a little bit more. So we have a little bit more to work with and creating the first animation here. And the first line of keyframes is crucial. But because this is one of the only things that you need to do for the first one, because we're gonna use the same clip and the same animation uh, later on to make this effect. So this is basically the only part of the zoom in animation which you need to make perfect. Once this is made perfect, we're gonna duplicate the layers and so on to make the infinite 3D zoom transition. So now that we've done that, we're gonna make sure that we are on the last keyframe, which is now a little bit more zoomed in, and we're gonna skip one more frame forward in time. So that means one more frame, and then we're gonna go out to the timeline, and we're gonna cut away this last part. So making a cut and then delete the last part because we don't need that anymore. Now, once we're done with that, we're going to duplicate this one time. We're going to take the duplicated layer and we're going to place all the way up on track number six because this is going to be our main layer. And once we adjust everything on the first main layer here, then we can also copy these effects over to the clips underneath. Or we can do it at the end once we get to the point where we actually make the transition in between two clips. So now that we have this on track number six, what we're going to do is to go down to the bottom one and we're just going to duplicate this and take the duplicated clip and place underneath the top layer. But we're going to nudge this a few frames to the right. This also depends on how you want it to look. So the more you nudge it to the right, the bigger gap you're going to have between the zoom transition and between the uh, uh, buildings or objects, subjects, whatever you have in your edit, the bigger the nudge, the bigger the gap. And uh, I found just a couple of frames to be perfect because it really creates that seamless uh, transition. So now that we've done that to all the layers here, all the six layers are nudged to the right. We're going to do it with the last one as well. And if we now scrub through here, we can take a look at the masked out part in the center of the frame here, the black spot. And as we go through and scrub through the timeline, you can see that it sort of stretches out and it creates that infinite 3D zoom. If we take a look at the clip at the beginning, which is the original uh, drone footage, we can still see that we have the clock. And this is where we need to do the change. So once we're happy with the placement of all the layers and we find our transition to be silky smooth, the next step is to actually use that clock and make an animation out of that. So we're going to import that to our timeline now. 
the next step is to replace the clip on track number five with this clock because that allows the clock to be behind the first layer so it's, uh, it's sort of going inwards and then rotates to the side so if we delete this layer here and replace it we're gonna stretch it out so it has the same duration as the clip above and we're gonna have the same cut to at the beginning of it and at the end of it so it matches the clip on top and once we have the matching clip we're gonna select the top clip and we're gonna copy the keyframes from this one and paste those keyframes and the animation on the clock layer now once we have this pasted on the clock layer just scrubbing through the timeline here you can see that the clock is following and has the same movement as the first layer so now you cannot see that 3d animation anymore but we're gonna fix this by adding some rotation to the clock so to add some rotation to the clock to make it better and more seamless and also easier to rotate since the clip already contains keyframes in frame and fit, playing around with the rotation might ruin some of that. So what we're going to do now is to make sure that we have the clock layer selected, then copy that layer, open up a new project with the same settings, and we're going to paste the clock animation. So now the clock animation will look like this. And we're going to export this as uh, AGVC Transparency 1080p. This allows us to maintain that transparent background when we import this to our main project. And moving back to our main project, importing the clock animation, we can see that it now follows the same movement as the building from layer 6. So the next step is to go into the clock layer, find a point where you want to start the animation and then make a keyframe. Now here you can play around with different uh, uh, starting points and end points and how fast or slow you want the animation to go. But make sure that you end the transition before you are fully zoomed in or less your clock or your object will start rotating around itself as you can see here uh, in this example. So what I needed to do here was to start the animation a little bit earlier and I ended up with an animation that looks like this, which is a whole lot better and it actually disappears. So for the end of the animation, the last keyframe, I went one more keyframe ahead and then I just moved it out of the image so I didn't see it anymore and then I didn't really have to worry about the clock uh, popping up in the image again. So now that we have that done, we have the animation to our clock and we also have a smooth 3 the infinite zoom here going on. Now once we're done with this we can also see that we have some misplacement in the animation here if we take a look right here and this is because we replaced one of the clips with the clock right so the clip which was at the clock's position uh, is now gone which uh, creates this opening which we can see here in the beginning of the zoom. So to fix this what I did was to nudge the two layers the layer on track number six and the clock layer a little bit too deep right so we have a perfect line going from the clock layer down to the bottom layer so it should look something like this to prevent that opening in the transition so if we scrub through now you can see that we have the perfect animation and there's no additional gaps now as the next step we're going to multi-select all of these because this is going to be our end top layer so the this is going to be our final layer and if we want this transition to be longer then we're going to add multiple layers and multiple zoom transitions underneath this in our final export so we're going to multi-select these and we're going to open up a new project with the same settings and we're going to export this with the agvc transparency at 1080p now once the export is complete we can drag this over to our timeline and as we go through the clip here we can see that we have this perfect seamless infinite 3d zoom transition but we want to apply some more layers to it as well so what we're going to do is to delete the clock layer which we used to export to this one layer and we're going to take the layer which is now on track number six and pull down to track number five the next step is to take the newly exported file and and then apply that to track number six. 
Now to have a perfect result, we're gonna pay attention to the end of all the layers. So the end of the layers should look like a staircase. So it should look evenly just like this. And we have the stairs going up or down, depending on how you see it. And this will place the transition in the perfect spot. So you don't have any of those open gaps once the transition goes through. So if we scrub through the transition, we can see that everything is perfectly placed and we have no issues with any unwanted gaps in the sequence. Now, as a final touch here, we need to add the clock to the background or to the clip at the end as well. So we have the clock at the beginning opening up, the camera runs through the tunnel here and we want the same effect at the end. So we want the clock or another clock to open up and then go into a new clip. So the way that we're going to do this is sort of the same way. It's going to be a little bit easier because we already made the animation. So we're going to import the exported clock clip and place that on track number one. This will automatically place it behind everything else. So this will be the clip which will be the furthest away from the camera. So meaning it will be at the end. So we can also see that once we scrub through the timeline here, we can see the clock is uh, is being revealed once the first clock is going to the right side. And the next step now is to do the same thing as we did with the first one, and that is to create the rotation animation. So the final step is to export all these layers into one layer for them to import and add the clip that we want to transition into. So again, we're going to copy this over to a new project and we're going to export with the AGVC transparency 1080p. And once this is exported, we're going to import this over to our project and we're going to find a video clip which we want to transition into. So we want to place the additional clip exactly when the clock is starting to move to the right or left, depending on which way you have chosen. Now, there is a few more things that you can apply to this as well, like motion blur. And we want motion blur because we want to hide some of those rough edges because after all, this is an image. So we want to hide that this is an image. So we want to add some motion blur. So we're going to go into edit on the transition layer here and go to the point where we start to see some, some heavier movements to the zoom. And then we're going to apply a short zoom and make sure that the first keyframe has the radius of zero and then we can go to the end and we can apply our desired amount of zoom. So I'm going to keep this around 10-ish. Uh, now, the final thing is to export. So let's take a look at the exported version of this 3D infinite zoom transition that we just created. So that's one way of creating an infinite zoom transition in LumaFusion and uh, you know the more layers that you put into it the longer it's going to be and you can also add some rotation to it to the finished rendered project like I did that's why you saw the rotation of the entire video there just you know using the same layer as we exported as our final layer and then just added some rotation to the entire layer everything and then just you know Anyway, I really hope that you enjoyed today's tutorial and if you found any wow 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 value if you find any fine if you found any value in this uh, tutorial make sure to hit that subscribe button and if this is the first time that you are here I really appreciate that you stopped by and make sure to subscribe and check out my Instagram for some behind the scenes and uh, and some uh, short tutorials uh, I'm going to try to upload some reels which is showing some tips and tricks which is usually a minute so if you are in a rush then you should check some of these there is already uh, one up which is uh, color grading hack in luma fusion everything is linked down in the description below as well so with that said thanks for watching and i hope you join in on the next video as well